Hey, Chris Lipe here with three easy things you can do to coax your voice into singing higher. And these three, I hesitate to call them exercises, but <laughs> techniques are things that a lot of really good singers do, whether they realize they're doing it or not, and whether we're able to pick out these things specifically from their voices, they are doing them. But before you engage in these exercises, you need to take a step back and realize that singing is not about achieving perfection. It's not about hitting that note or singing in that key. It's about experiencing things and delivering that experience to your listeners, experiencing your voice and then letting other people experience your voice. This type of mindset shift is going to help you engage your voice in ways that you never otherwise would. And it's going to help you do things that you never otherwise would think to do. And if this sort of approach speaks to you, be sure to click the link below and join my free voice course. And I'll help you learn how to learn about your voice, which is really the essence of what makes a great singer. Someone who's able to be a student of their own voice. Here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to remove our face <laughs> from the problem areas of our singing. Almost every single private lesson that I conduct, when I see a student who hasn't had much experience with their upper range trying to sing high, when they shoot for a higher note, they do this. They squint their eyes, they flex their cheek muscles, Everything goes up. They, they tense their forehead. I love, I love, I love, I love. And along with this face tension, they start tensing their shoulders and kind of everything. But it all starts with their face. Their face tries to follow their voice up. This is actually the exact opposite of what we want to be doing. We want to be removing our face. <laughs> and so to help us do this, we're going to practice, yes, clucking like a chicken. Let's take a look and listen at what clucking like a chicken is going to help us do. First of all, it's going to require that we're extremely loose in our face. Mark. Mock, 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 mock. Okay. Mock, 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 mock. We're blah, 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 blah. We're our, our face is extremely loose. Okay. Particularly our lips. And uh, the rest of our expression is going to follow this. Like this. Mock, 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 mock. The other thing we're going to do is because things are so loose, mock, 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 we're going to make sure that. We're not closing off our nasal passage. Finally, if you're really going to cluck like a chicken, you need to be pretty range-filled. Right? You're pretty range-filled. But you're not thinking too much about it. Also, when you think about that... There's this push that you're doing. It's very crawl, crawl, nasal, right? We're going to let our, our nose take over. We're going to feel what's happening in our nose as we cluck like a chicken. And we're going to practice changing the quality of the sound coming out of our, of our face without engaging our face. This is so, so huge. Because we're not having to do this. Buck, 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 buck. We're not doing that. If you notice when I'm doing the cluck like a chicken, my pitch is going all over the place. It's not necessarily good sounding pitch, but my pitch is going all over the place without my body trying to follow my pitch. Remove your face by practicing clucking like a chicken. <laughs> okay, number two. And this feeds into clucking like a chicken a little bit, although we're gonna dial it back and bring it more into, into Singville. We are going to learn to throw notes. 
Okay. Now, if we go back to the chicken, and I just sort of spontaneously went up higher any way that I could and maintain composure here. In other words, not like, I'm maintaining a normal sort of speech pattern resonance, but then all of a sudden I'm like that. I'm doing that. So if we take a simple line where we are going to sing some notes, and then one of those notes, we're going to practice throwing. But here's the thing. We're not going to throw to a particular note. We're going to maintain the cluck like a chicken composure, and we're going to let our, our note kind of go somewhere. Okay? So the phrase we're going to use for this is, I'm living free, I'm living loud. We're going to say those words. And we're going to go over a fairly relaxed track and I'm going to practice singing a melody that's well within my speech resonance range. La 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 Right around there. And then every once in a while, I'm going to throw a note. some of those notes that you just heard me throw, there's this sense of freedom, right? It doesn't matter what note I hit, as long as I let it go, let it go, right? As long as I just let it go. But sometimes, even though I'm just letting it go, my ear kicks in and it becomes an actual relevant note. This is so huge to be able to discover how to do this with your voice, because after a while, you start throwing your voice up, your ear catches it, and then you have a note. You have a great, high, wonderful note. notes, release them and see what happens. Now I should mention that during this drill, this particular one, we're not singing lots of notes high. We're singing comfortably and then we're throwing our voice high. This happens with real and awesome singers much more than you think it does. And you should start paying attention to this. Yes, there are those songs that are very, very high. But if we're ever going to get to singing songs that are just higher, higher all over the place, we first need to start with this idea, which brings me to number three. If we are going to learn to sing higher in general, we must, must, must learn to separate 
our tone from our vowels. Let's take some notes on living free because it's got li and free, two difficult things to sing high. If I start inching up and I, I choose some notes that are higher and uncomfortably high, Now, when I when I did that, I really wasn't that tense, right? Living free, living loud. You don't see me doing this. You don't see me really contorting my face. What's going on? Well, first, let's talk about what's not going on. If we get used to singing phrases like living free and living loud in our chest resonance, when we go to put them higher in our range, we tend to get married to certain ways to approach vowels. So in other words, this isn't challenging. Free, free. But when I try to take the E vowel up, Free, 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 step it up. Free, 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 free. And I, I take the same sort of feel approach higher. I end up tensing. Free, because I've formed that vowel. Free, free. In part, without really realizing it, in the back of my throat. Here by cupping my tongue. Living free. It's very different than this. Free, free. Or I'm throwing the vowel formation forward. When I have the vowel formation forward in my mouth, the back of my throat is free to shape my tone independently of my vowel. Here's the difference. Free, back, free, 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 free. You can see, I've cupped my tongue to make an E. No good. Forward. Free, 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 free. Now, what I've done is I've allowed myself to transfer into my head resonance, but watch. Free, 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 living free and free. Living free, 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 free. I don't constrict airflow with the back of my tongue. I don't get my neck involved. I keep my face loose because I'm not trying to be married to a particular tone I had when I formed a vowel in my lower speech resonance. As you experiment with this, you're going to realize how important it is to separate your vowel placement from your tone. I really hope these three tips were helpful, but if you'd like to explore them even more deeply, click that link below and join my free voice course. We'll see you there.